Hello everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Brooks Catamount 2, a trail runner uh, that gets a pretty significant upgrade over version one here, which we're gonna compare in some detail. So um, it's a uh, 29 uh, millimeter heel, 29 to 30 millimeter uh, heel and uh, 23 millimeter forefoot. So six millimeter drop. It has a uh, super nitrogen infused supercritical EVA midsole um, DNA flash. There's no change in the stack height or the foam from uh, version one. I've now run twice in them. I'm going to take them out here for a third run today. However, there are some uh, significant changes to the upper and also the, a propulsion plate, which Brooks calls Sky, Sky Vault. The plate extends from the midfoot where it serves as a stabilizing shank and then has its three fingers going forward where it provides propulsion and also some rock protection. Uh, I like prefer the uh, nylon plastic type plates over the carbon in a trail shoe, although there are some good implementations. The other very significant change is to the outsole. You can see here in uh, version one, no separations, no cut-throughs to the uh, midsole, whereas over here we have cut-throughs. So what, the, what does that do? We now have some flexibility. Uh, version one was a very stiff shoe. This one has some decent miles on it, no flex whatsoever. Whereas over here, we'll take a look at version two. You can see we have some nice forefoot flex, something I really like for climbing ability. I've already noticed um, that uh, while this was a very snappy, quick shoe, uh, it wasn't very uh, kind of versatile. The upper, as you can see, was a soft, quite pliable mesh, uh, not particularly supportive, especially given how rigid the platform was. Great for kind of straight away, faster stuff. Uh, and and it, it was a fast shoe, but not the kind of 100 mile shoe Brooks was claiming uh, or, or marketing a bit around. Whereas over here, still probably not a 100 mile shoe, but what we have is a very nicely uh, more kind of substantial upper with inside a lining, a soft lining of 100% recycled material. We still have a gusset tongue, fairly thin. Uh, Jeff Valeri is testing also, and he finds a bit of lace bite. I haven't yet in the first two runs. You see, as before, we have overlays or underlays more extensive than before. Uh, we have a semi-rigid heel counter. And what I really like, which we didn't have in version one, is we have those raised sidewalls, which give the rear some stability as well. As far as the underfoot platform, I measure it exactly the same widths. There's no change there in terms of width of the platform. But you will see we have a larger uh, uh, central cavity. I think because they have the plate in there, they don't need the outsole to provide the stability. We also now have some decoupling at the rear and all of that is uh, nicely felt. In terms of weight, we do gain a little bit of weight. Um, we come in here, this is a US 8.5 at 9.58 ounces, 270 grams. So we gain about seven grams or a quarter of an ounce, same stack height. Uh, maybe the weight increase comes from something else that Brooks did. The lugs are now about four millimeters, whereas before they were a very kind of slim three to three and a half. You can see more uh, lug depth and also maybe a bit more aggressive uh, pattern, uh, but fairly similar. So uh, I'm gonna take them out now for a third run here in Stratum, New Hampshire. Uh, moderately technical in places, smooth in others. It's a pretty good place to kind of give a trail shoe um, a good go around. So it is $170. It is coming out in February. And in terms of the Brooks Trail lineup, where does it sit? Well, Brooks really didn't have a kind of faster, more technical trail shoes, kind of quick uh, shoe in the lineup with the Cascadia, which was the 16, dramatically lighter. 
uh, sort of your big mountain shoe and their big uh, DNA Loft V3 super cushioned kind of ultra focus Caldera. So this fills a really nice slot in the lineup. So we'll talk about a few more comparisons uh, after the run. So okay, I'm gonna head let's out. Let's talk about fit here a bit. I'm at my usual eight and a half, true to size, but this is a performance oriented fit. Uh, it's not super wide in the toe box, more than adequate for me um, and appropriate for kind of the more technical, quicker paces the shoe is designed for. Um, heel hold is excellent. Uh, I laced up a little looser than usual um, and I'm not feeling any of the lace bite yet. You can see the heel with those wings. The sensation here is sort of a, of a linear motion, lots of midfoot stability from the plate that starts there and then kind of a springy front toe off because we got some flex and we got the plate in the mix. As far as traction, pretty darn good. This is all kind of frozen snow, kind of dirty ice. So it's working really well on this stuff. Okay, top of the first hill. Here's the stratum trails, really neat. So on the climb, very decisive and kind of oriented like an arrow. Very stable, especially midfoot, but I'm appreciating the front flex, which the first version lacked. I like some front flex for climbing, but also for the smoother, flatter, fast sections. Now the foam is quite firm, but has a lot of spring to it. So this doesn't feel like an EVA, for example, Solomon's Energy Cell, and it's not soft like Energy Surge. Um, or even the newer power runs from Saucony. It's energetic, firm, and very decisive. That's what I'm saying so far about the ride. And I found the same on the road, even though, of course, we got that outsole, which plays a bit of a role on the road, you know, noticed. So I'm gonna keep going. Nice grip. So this is known as the USA Today Trail, USA Today newspaper. And look what folks have done in the neighborhood to decorate the uh, newspaper box at this season. Very cool. Moving along here. This is called Lower Father and Son. Very stable, runs like an arrow. You can see there's a few roots and rocks, some mud, very, very smooth, straight tracking shoe. So quite a bit of rebound from the DNA flash midsole. You can really feel it pop when you pick up the pace a bit. So I really notice how well the upper holds me as I'm moving along. Really excellent security here. Relatively decent toe box room, but this is a speedier shoe, so holds number one. Okay, let's talk about the ride and some conclusions. Definitely an all around ride. Um, in the uh, more kind of technical sections, the plate, which extends through here, our uh, Sky Vault, through here provides quite a bit of uh, stability. The rear is very stable. Uh, and then when you climb, you definitely feel the flex and the propulsion of the plate. Um, the upper support and the plate and the outsole provide plenty of stability and, but also the profile, plenty of agility on the downhills. Now, when you get on the, a flatter section, what you feel is a noticeable impulse from the midfoot into that front plate. Um, it's, 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 uh, you kind of feel this, the initial stiffness and then flexibility up front and off you go. But you always feel quite a bit of support through the midfoot. So um, we kind of have an arrow motif here and that's sort of the sensation. You feel like you're always tracking straight and true. The platform is wide enough but not super wide so we don't kind of get blocky or or kind of uh, unstable especially at slower paces when you're kind of tilting of course the upper helps that a lot i really 
think this is a superb trail shoe upper. You can see those underlays. The mesh is hydrophobic, meaning it repels some moisture, but it's dense enough. It's not super thick, but it's dense, so it really holds the foot super well. I didn't feel any lace bite whatsoever, so I'm good on that. Now, what does it compare to? Well, it reminds me a lot of a more dynamic, more cushioned Sense Pro 4 from Solomon. The foam here, I didn't talk about the foam, is uh, I said it was relatively firm. It is, but it returns a lot of energy. Um, not so much in a bouncy fashion, but kind of in a quick fashion. There's plenty of vibration absorbing. I could well see easily doing a trail half marathon in these, and if there's potential that people will do a full, maybe longer ultra in them if they're, you know, if they want a lighter kind of agile shoe. So the Sense 4 Pro, another one that comes to mind, Peregrine from uh, Saucony. I think its lugs are a little deeper than what we have here. Um, uh, it is kind of a more kind of technical, aggressive uh, trail shoe. Uh, it doesn't have a, a, a plastic plate. It has kind of a woven plate. Um, and I, I don't have it here, but it is more, almost more flexible than this, but less kind of propulsive, more focused on the more technical. Uh, let's see, others, uh, the newer Solomon, the, the, the Pulsar Trail, also has a plastic fingered plate up front. I don't think it's as effective as what's here. Um, I always felt that one sort of has a flatter feel, same with the Pro version. Here it's more oriented towards propulsion and rock protection, whereas I think in the Solomons, a good part of it is for the, to kind of stabilize the softer foam. And here the foam is not super soft, but it's appropriate. You know, it reminds me of a, and it is a super critical foam, of a much updated kind of classic trail shoe uh, midsole. A lot of midsoles have gone soft and, and stability and kind of speed suffer for sort of all that cush. But here you kind of have a, uh, a, a very energetic foam, a dynamic plate system. It all comes together super well. Uh, all around her here. Um, uh, I've run the road. I've run these moderately technical trails, roots and rocks. I've run on ice and snow. Not, you know, heavy duty, but decently hard snow and some ice. Everything works well. Grip is good. Um, propulsion is good. <laughs> Upper is solid. So we really have a very, very fine new entry here uh, from Brooks that um, uh, kind of puts them, uh, puts their trail shoe line, gives it sort of that quicker, faster shoe to go with the Caldera course, big, um, big, big cush and the Cascadia, sort of your long mountain shoe. So we're gonna have a full multi-tester review of this in written form of this very exciting new shoe. It's coming out in early February, $170. Thank you very much for watching.